Who was Charles Darwin? Charles Darwin was an English naturalist who was fascinated with nature. But not an ordinary naturalist with an ordinary fascination with nature. Hello. What are you doing here? Why such beauty when no one can see? In 1831, Charles Darwin was only 22 when he began a five-year voyage aboard the British ship HMS Beagle to explore, observe, and study the natural world. The Beagle sailed throughout South America and to remote places like the Galapagos Islands off Ecuador. Darwin later wrote that he felt like a blind man being given sight. He returned to England with his mind and notebooks full of fantastic images. What a brilliant red! Nothing seemed too insignificant for his scrutiny. He kept detailed records of what he saw during his voyage on the Beagle. He collected fossils. He kept detailed recordings of uh, plants and animals. He drew them. He observed them. Little did Darwin realize that his years on the Beagle would begin a lifetime of hard work and controversy. The greatest scientists of Darwin's day referred to the appearance of species originally as the mystery of mysteries. Now, Darwin was an ambitious young man, and he decided to tackle this greatest mystery in the biology of his day. Mountains. Darwin took on the task of unraveling this mystery methodically, with patience and care. Gradually, one simple and elegant idea became more and more clear to him, that all living things are related. It was a conclusion that to Darwin could not be escaped. But he also knew he was in dangerous waters. He rarely shared his thoughts with others, but his brother was an exception. The similarity of structure indicates one thing and one thing only, an ancient common ancestor. Real flesh and blood parents. Why didn't you say so then? Hmm? You must publish your ideas, if only to establish your priority. What's holding you back? You have to understand that Darwin was a respectable man. His father was a well-known physician. He came from a well-known family. He went to Cambridge University to train for the Church of England. And he knew eminent scientists of his day. In Darwin's time, the prevailing explanation for the great diversity of life was a literal interpretation of the Earth's creation as described in Genesis, the first book of the Bible. Established naturalists believe that God created each individual species of animals and plants, usually miraculously, at the beginning, and that these species had stayed fixed. We allow the planets and the sun to be governed by natural laws, but the smallest insect we wish to be created by a special act of God. <laughs> Surely the creation of life has to be explained in the same way as geology, using natural, ordinary, everyday causes. Well, in theory, yes, but in practice, there can be no question about the prime cause, divine will. Shouldn't men of science be free to investigate each and every means by which new species come into being? If by that you mean wild accusations about man's ancestry, the answer is no. He was doing something highly unorthodox in his day. Not unorthodox because it went against the church per se, but because it went against all of natural history in Great Britain. He knew he stood to jeopardize the whole united establishment of science, politics, and the church. He knew that he could get into very, very bad trouble and ruin his career. And yet Darwin also knew the evidence he gathered and the tests he conducted supported the revolutionary idea that living things are related and have changed over millions and millions of years. This new way of thinking was a mark of his genius. It took 
Darwin 23 years of work to overcome his own doubts to finally present his ideas to the world. His revolutionary book, The Origin of Species, introduced a scientific theory to explain how evolution occurs. He called his mechanism of change natural selection. Darwin had the courage to go against what was believed in those days and it changed the world in a great and a profound way. One of the remarkable things about Darwin's contribution that is, I think, too seldom appreciated is he didn't just tell us how we got here. He told us, in a sense, why biology makes sense. The sequences of our genes, the structures of our body, and even our instincts in terms of behavior all make sense and all tie together because of evolution. If I were to give a prize for the single best idea anybody ever had, I'd give it to Darwin for the idea of natural selection. Ahead of Newton, ahead of Einstein, it was Darwin's great stroke to see how to unite the facts about the excellence of design of all the different species. He understood that what he was proposing was a truly revolutionary idea. In Westminster Abbey, there is an area called Scientist's Corner. There, in the company of that other revolutionary scientific thinker, Sir Isaac Newton, lies Charles Darwin. <laughs>